Hi there. Welcome to today's edition of our learning tutorial. Today, I would want us to have a look at how to draft, cut, and sew this beautiful capped Victorian corset with Basque. The easiest way. If this is something you'd love to learn, do stick and stay and let's do it together. Thank you so much for being a part of our 6,000 subscribers. Let's get started. Before we'd be able to sew this beautiful design, we first would have to draft our basic bodies. This is the front and that is the back. In case you want to know how we came by these, I'll put the link in the description box. We will modify the front, then to the back. We move 8 inches from the waist downwards and this will represent the shoulder to hip measurement. Then we mark the nipple to nipple measurement also on the hip line. We would divide the hip measurement by 4 and then add our seam allowance to it. The hip is 36 divided by 4 gives us 9 plus 2, 11. On the bust line, we will mark the nipple to nipple measurement starting from this bust point, but then we add half of an inch to it. On the hip line, we measure 2 inches away from this very point. Then we draw a line to connect this to that. We mark half inch away from this point on the waist line. Then we draw lines to connect this very point to the half inch and back onto the hip line. We would measure seven inches from the shoulder downwards. This is where the dress is to start. At this point, we'll widen this dart to equal the dart under bust. Then, we draw lines to connect this to the apex of the shoulder dart. On the bust line, we move two inches at the center front upwards. Then, we open this by half inch. We draw a line to connect the tip here to this very point. We measure the distance from the underpass that here all the way to the top. Then, we just oppose that against this very part. We get six and a half. And this is where the six and a half gets to. And so we draw an S-like shape to connect this to the arm pole. For the cup sake, we'll connect this point up here to this that using a curve. We'll connect this that towards the bus point also using a curve then onward to this very line from this side we're also going to connect the bus point to the under bus that using a curve just as we did for this side and we'll connect this same point also to our nipple to nipple that we marked here using the same curve. From the shoulder to waist, I'm moving downwards by 5 inches and on the side seam by 2.5. This is because of the length of our client.
and we take off our 2 inches seam allowance from the side. We are to connect this to that, but first, we cut this off, fold this, that onto this, and that onto the other. To ensure that there's no space left under the dress, we are going to tighten this dart. And so we'll further take off half of an inch from this side, half from that side, and then three quarters from this very side. Then we connect them all to the corresponding waistline. We fold this new dart onto the other. You can see that the hemline has been distorted, and so we'll refine it. Then we cut. We label this as C, S, and this as 1, 2, and 3. This is what we have of the front. We then modify the back. We measure 8 inches from the waist downwards to represent the shoulder to hip line. Now we mark the hip divided by 4 plus our 2 inches seam allowance. We mark the dart point on the hip line. Then we connect these dart intervals to the point. On the side seam, we'll take our seam allowance, then divide the distance from that very point to the apex of our dart. We'll do the same for the waist line. We draw a line to connect these two and extend to the hip line. We move towards this side by half inch. And then we connect these two points all to the half inch we just marked. We take up two and a half inches from the side seam and then two inches from the center back. Then we take up our two inches seam allowance. We have to fold this that onto this, the other onto this too. But before that, we need to cut this flat so that folding it becomes quite easier.
we label this as four, five, and six, and then we cut them. We'll use this at the front patterns to cut our fabric, the lining, and the interface as well. This is how we added our seam allowances. For number one, the seam allowance was added on this and that side. Bear in mind it was on fold and so it's been opened. These are the pieces we've cut. When it comes to C, the allowance was added all around it except the top here. With S, the same. Allowance added all around except the top. When it comes to number two, we added our seam allowance to the left side and to the right side. We did not add any on top and there was none added beneath. For number three, no allowance was added on the side because we had already added our two inch seam allowance to it. Now our seam allowance was added on the side that will be joined to number two. When it comes to number four, no seam allowance was added on this side which joins number three because our seam allowance has already been added but then the allowance was added on the side where it will be joined to number five number five has allowance added on both sides and with number six the allowance was added on this side and not at the center back this is because we are going to lace it and then we wouldn't have to add any zipper allowance to it in case you don't want to install a zipper instead you'd add your zipper allowance to it. When it comes to the fabrics too, as I said earlier, we have cut the fashion fabric, which has been fused with warden. This is an extra hard warden, and so it makes the fabric quite structured. Then the lining has also been fused with violin. This is a bit hard, but not that much. And so it is just to make the two strong. That is exactly what you've done for all these pieces. We move on to our sewing machine and stitch the pieces together. We start by stitching C to S on this very side. We repeat same for the others and the lining as well. After stitching this, we will fix our boning onto this channel and so we are leaving half of an inch down here half of an inch at the top and then we will stitch two lines on both the edges So this is it. For the fashion fabric, we will not insert any boning, but then we will stitch two flat fell seams. Now we are joining number one to number two and to number three. We repeat same for the lining. After this, we are going to stitch the bones onto the various channels. And so one will be at the center here. We are going to fix one here and there. We would also repeat those on the other sides. All that we do is that we start from about half 
an inch and then we end about half of an inch before we get to the edge here. After stitching all the bones onto the various channels, the next step would be to put this onto the fashion fabric itself, aligning them perfectly well. Now, we're going to finish this part, this whole part, Then we reduce the seam allowance of the lining. Then we create notches and then reduce the seam bulk on the edges. We fold the seam allowance to the wrong side and then we give it a hot press. Then we turn it to the good side. Turning this inside out proved a bit difficult because of the boning. And so you may decide to use the screwdriver or anything that is quite blunt to help it. You know, it's very doable. Next, we are stitching the two cups together. At this point, you may decide to insert your brazier cup depending on the size of your breast. But bear in mind that by virtue of the fact that you used warded to interface the fashion fabric and then also you interfaced the lining, means you can get the brazier cup without necessarily inserting the breast form itself. And so this is without it, we are going ahead to Insert it. Mm. 
we will proceed to run the overlock stitches to secure the rough edges. So to insert the cap, we are just going to stitch this in place. For the back, we join the various pieces together, 4 to 5 and 5 to 6. Repeating for the other side and also the lining just joining number four to five and to six after stitching the back pieces together it's now time to insert the boning into our channels and so just as we did for the front we are going to cut the bone leaving about half inch on top and half beneath then we just stitch two lines on each of them so we'll do that and come back to continue after that we'll stitch the fashion fabric and the lining together First finishing the top here. Then we flip good sides together and then we go ahead to also stitch the center back where we'll be doing the lacing. And so after finishing it like this, we'll go ahead and fix our eyelets. And then we continue. We run stitches on the edge and then we pipe. So we repeat same for the back patterns. After stitching them beautifully in place, we go ahead and join the side seams. So our beautiful dress is done.